I'm Priscilla. Now this week, we are preparing to celebrate Pentecost, where the church around the world celebrates and gives thanks for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the church. So why don't right now we just take a moment to pause and invite the Holy Spirit to come and fill us afresh. Come Holy Spirit. Come and fill us wherever we are watching this from. Jesus, we thank you for having come to be with us in your birth and demonstrating your love for us on the cross and you've given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts so that we can know your presence and your mighty work inside our lives. So come Holy Spirit, teach us, equip us and help us to experience your love in a fresh, brand new way today. Amen. Now this year, we've been focusing on the ideas of God with us as seen at Christmas and then God for us as seen on the cross. And now as we come to Pentecost, the idea of God in us, working in and through us. And to work through us, God has given us spiritual gifts to enable us to serve and love one another well. Now, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4 says, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. Now, what does this verse tell us? The first thing is that, all of us have been given different spiritual gifts. They're gifts of healing, just like what Miles have shared, words of knowledge, tongues, wisdom, service, prophecy, and so much more that's mentioned in scriptures. Now, this also means that you and I, we don't have to fall into the trap of comparison um, of whose gift is better because every gift is given by God and He has a particular kingdom purpose here on earth. Now, who gives these gifts? It's the Holy Spirit. He not only administers these gifts to the body of Christ, but He empowers these gifts within us. So today, we're going to look at the spiritual gift of words of knowledge and prophecy. The passage we're reading from is John 1, verse 45 to 51. And this is the scene where Jesus was calling His first disciples. So Andrew, Simon Peter, Philip, and then the passage we're about to read, Jesus calls Nathanael. So let's read how that went. Verse 45, Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, exclaimed Nathanael. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Come and see for yourself, Philip replied. As they approached, Jesus said, Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me? Nathanael asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. And Jesus asked him, Do you believe this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth. You will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Now, in this passage, Jesus' gift of words of knowledge and prophecy was at work. Now, first, let's look at the gift of words of knowledge. Now, what is that? It's a supernaturally given knowledge about a past or current situation. And the messenger would have no way of knowing except by the Holy Spirit. You see, in the passage we just read, as Nathanael approached Jesus, Jesus gave a word of knowledge on the kind of man Nathanael was, a genuine and integrous one. And of course, Nathanael was shocked because Jesus had never met him before. How could he have possibly known? See, the Holy Spirit, who knows all things, made it known to Jesus. Now, when we exercise this gift, the supernatural knowledge received from the Holy Spirit enables us to minister more effectively um, to the needs of the person and to know and understand situations. The recipient feels personally known by God and it draws them back to Him. 
just as in the passage, Nathaniel responded to Jesus' word of knowledge by exclaiming, Wow! Jesus, you, you, you are indeed the Son of God. That's just who you are. Now, each week at the 5 p.m. service, we take a moment at the pre-service prayer to ask the Holy Spirit for a word of knowledge for those who are coming for the service. One time, someone had a word of a person who has been afraid to eat pineapples. And after receiving that word, that person who didn't like it or was afraid to try it, now enjoy it. God just wanted to speak to that person and give her enjoyment. Another time, there was a word uh, for a woman who was holding a mug and in, is in a tricky situation and that God wanted to minister to her. Now, that woman happened to be watching church online all the way from Bellamina in Northern Ireland, 3,000 miles away. Now, so that's the word of knowledge gift. What about the gift of prophecy? Now, prophecy is a supernatural message to edify, exhort, and comfort. Its primary purpose is to build up and strengthen the person receiving the word. It doesn't bring condemnation, even though sometimes it may be a word of rebuke, but it should never be a word of condemnation because that doesn't come from God. Now, these words can be used by the person receiving as a weapon of warfare to take hold and declare God's promises in difficult situations. So in John 1 that we've read, Jesus, after giving the word of knowledge to Nathanael, prophesied over his life with a promise that from then on, Nathanael's spiritual eyes would be open to see and experience a direct, fulfilling relationship with God. Both these gifts have a powerful ability to minister God's heart directly to people and to build up the church. So let me just give us a couple of pointers for when we exercise this gift. The first one is that be open to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Now these words are often felt, heard or impressed upon us very subtly. And our role as the giver is a messenger. We may not understand what it means, but it can make perfect sense to the person receiving, like the pineapple word at the five. And the second one is, give the word in a posture of humility and love. 1 Corinthians 13 tells us we know in part and we prophesy in part. So we only see part of the whole picture and not the valleys in between. And ultimately our gifts find its perfection in God's love. So we use this gift with humility. We don't say God says, but perhaps something like I have a sense that, and then you give your word. If it's from God, the person receiving will know and we don't need to hype it up. And it's okay to ask the person receiving, what do you think about that word? Does it resonate with you? And by doing that, we are inviting the person to discern together if the word is from God. And sometimes we do get it wrong and it's okay because we are all growing to hear the Holy Spirit better. And the third one is, no hatch, match, dispatch, no dates, no mates. I know you're wondering what that means. <laughs> so we don't encourage words uh, on specific dates like when you're going to have a baby hatch or you're when you're going to get married like a match or even more, some people prophesy that the person is going to marry them or when the person is going to die like a date dispatch. And often the word comes from a really good place, good intention of the giver wanting that breakthrough for that person. But the moment we say God says, it creates a problem when it's inaccurate. See, we can trust that God will lead the person according to His perfect plan. And ultimately, when it comes to using this gift, Jesus calls us to follow Him so that we can trust that He will guide us and He speaks to us. And in fact, He loves to speak to His children, probably more than we even love to listen to Him. He eagerly speaks to us and wants to let us know what He's up to. So now that we've heard about it, we need to ask to receive the gift because Jesus says that if we ask, we will receive. And then it also means that we got to put it into practice. You know, we ask and receive it by faith. It means we need to go and exercise those gifts. So why don't we pray? 
Thank you, Lord, for the gift of words of knowledge and prophecy um, that has been used to build up your people and your church. Why don't right now you just ask the Holy Spirit to bring into remembrance um, a word that you've received and that has been a blessing to you and just thank the Lord for it. Maybe it was significant at that time that you received it or it was significant later on. Um, just thank the Lord for that word. And right now, if you are listening to this and you, you long for this gift, you want to be God's mouthpiece to um, the people around you and you eagerly desire for this gift, we're going to pray for that. Why don't you put out your hands uh, in front of you, just open up your heart before God and just ask Him for that gift. And then I'll pray for you. Holy Spirit, I pray for an impartation, a release of the gift of prophecy and words of knowledge on the person who is listening to this recording right now. I pray that each person will be a mouthpiece for you and the words that you will put into their hearts will be healing and restoration, Lord, to the person who is receiving it and it will build up your church. And in faith right now, we pray for opportunities to exercise this gift and we pray for boldness to release the word the Holy Spirit has given us for someone. Amen. And as I was preparing for this, I just had a sense that um, someone who is listening to this, um, God has actually given you the gift, um, this gift, words of knowledge and prophecy. And um, oftentimes you felt inadequate or you're not sure if you're hearing from God rightly. And there has been times where you wanted to release a word to someone. It's almost like you typed it into a message and halfway through you're thinking, yeah, maybe this won't mean that much. And some of these words that God has given to you, maybe you've written it down. They come in the form of prophetic songs that we'll need in the body of Christ right now. And I believe God wants to use you to release His words to His people. There is healing that will flow from these words that has the ability to heal wounded hearts. And if that's you, God will give you boldness to release His words. Jesus, we thank you for who you are and Holy Spirit, we yield to you right now and ask that you would help us to follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Holy Spirit. So let us close now by praying together the words of the ancient prayer, drawing from the words of Paul in Corinthians. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings of love are worth nothing, for whoever lives without love is counted dead before you. Therefore, send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts the most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace of all virtues. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.